Welcome everybody to the Commetrics University Online Webinar. The, it's our 19th Coffee Break Webinar. And today we're going to talk about why PR fails with social media marketing. Uh, I'm Ursi Gattaker and I'm the CTO of and co-founder of Commetrics. We've delivered social media marketing solutions and monitoring tools for all kinds of organizations. Ultimately, we help them improve their customer relationship management, beat their competition, and close more business. So, let me start off today with an example to, to make this a little bit more realistic. Um, and I'm taking here a soccer club, or a football club as we call in, it in Europe. Uh, and one of the reasons for this football club was that it felt uh, its PR material, its public relations material, didn't really come through the way the football club wanted it to come through. Sometimes mis uh, information was not passed on by the journalists or uh, in other cases uh, the information given was just not uh, incomplete so the club was wondering what they could do about it. Uh, because they had a lot of members who were also on Facebook they thought well maybe what we need to do we need to use our social media channels, including Twitter and the blog and Facebook, to distribute PR information to journalists and fans at the same time. And actually this, this worked because it was focusing on exclusive content, three minute videos about tra travel to Champion League games, interviews with players, goals and so forth shot by these players and that was unique content which was interesting to the journalists and the players alike uh, and the fans alike so the solution focuses on something exclusive it's something important so if they had a press release or if it went out through social media the fans wanted to check it out and the journalists felt they had to write about it but but because the fans had the same kind of information the journalists had to do a little bit more work and call up the club and get some quotes and other kind of things to show that they had actually added value um, so today's objective is actually quite straightforward I want you to walk away with a better understanding of how social media marketing can help you leverage your company's PR efforts more smartly to kind of work together with PR, public relations and social media. And then of course, it would be nice if you could choose us as your, uh, as your vendor for one of your important social media projects. So what is PR? PR is actually push. You control what information goes out and you pretty much control who is going to get the information, which journalists are on your distribution list. The difference is kind of that PR, while you have some control, you can't control what they write about it. With social media marketing, you don't have control. Right now, we have the example in the US with Gap, which changed its logo and uh, uh, its customers were actually going crazy about it on, on their Facebook page, not being happy about this. So you can't control this. You actually then have to respond and probably Gap's best solution is going to be to change its logo again because the new logo is hated by most people. So. While public relations in the past was kind of having a social relationship with the journalists, it has become somewhat more of a megaphone. You put it out and you hope as many people will redistribute it, print it and so on uh, as, as possible. Um, so here comes social media where things become a little bit more personal and you can respond. So if you put out news and people like Gap changing the logo, people don't like it, they can give you feedback. You may not like the feed kind of feedback you're getting, but you better listen. Uh, that's kind of the message which comes through here. For, I'm going to point out four things which you should make sure of. Most of you know about uh, Burson Marsteller. And Burson also has a blog by one of its founders, Bur uh, Harold. Um, and actually, the interesting stuff I discovered is that you can't really leave a comment on the blog. At least it wasn't possible for me. Some person Marsteller blogs allow you to comment and get and start a, an interaction kind of thing with, with the people who wrote about it. But in most cases, I get the feeling person Marsteller uses its blogs uh, to as megaphones to redistribute their information to reach more people. And that's not the intention of social media. Um, even if they have blogs enabled, usually they have quite a, f a few people, if any, uh, replying to their posts. The second uh, mistake you shouldn't make is if you can't do it right, don't make a fool of yourself. So if you hand out a press release, 
it's sometimes better if you're a small brand, if you're not The Gap or if you're not Deutsche Bank or if you're not uh, Coca-Cola, that you don't distribute it to 100 or 200 newspapers. Most of these newspapers won't care about your public relations or your press release or whatever it might be. So you target a few of them, you focus and you make it so interesting to them that they actually want to talk to you. So. Quantity may not be the best thing to do here, but quality by targeting. I have an example of a charity where they wanted to be in two national newspapers and what they did is they wrote in such a way that they knew the journalists of both newspapers would get very much interested and when they actually came back and they said, well, give us an interview, we need more material. So it worked for them. It didn't work in 100, but it worked in two national ones. So that's probably better than nothing. The third one is focus, focus, focus. For this purpose, and because it's not my client, I used a football club called Basel from the city of Basel in Switzerland. And when you look at their social media efforts, the purpose is clear. They want to get in contact. They want to reach out to their fans. They want to keep them informed about the football games, the results they have. But then suddenly in Sept on September 15th, they started on March 17th, 2009 to tweet. This September, they, they finished tweeting. And suddenly now for just about a month they haven't tweeted um, so if you know your target audience and they want these kind of information and you're sure you shouldn't just suddenly stop for four weeks or longer you should actually keep at it keep producing your short YouTube videos keep producing your Twitter feeds keep producing your Facebook wall posts with exclusive content that is interesting to your targeted audience okay don't stop and the fourth point I wanted to make sure we all understand is that you have to build trust and you can't buy trust. Uh, so if somebody says, uh, somebody left a comment on one of my blogs and his name was uh, buy Facebook fans, that's great. But how committed will these Facebook fans be? Don't buy them. Acquire them because they want to get your content. So you earn the trust one by one. So if you have attended several of my webinars, you probably will start to trust what we do that much that you might even want to do business with us. And that's just fine. But it doesn't happen overnight. Okay. And, and then you may go ahead and of course use the phone or you use the internet or whatever. And the purpose of social media marketing is, 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 is to find, relate and engage and keep the customer and not to sell. And in public relations, it's often information which says, here's a new product or here's a new product release. Uh, this is what it does and this, what, uh, uh, and this is what you can do. And it might not be that your customer is interested in this. So to wrap this up, uh, success means levering, leveraging content and you can leverage your public relations, your, your press release, but you, but you primarily leverage it by having good content on your social media such as as your blog and your Twitter feed uh, gets the people back to come to your blog so you have to do it right so one of the things you need to do is to enable people as the gap did to comment about their new logo and then you have to respond so I hope gap is not gonna make the same mistake as we discussed here a few weeks back what Nestle did with the Greenpeace attack second if you cannot do it right don't make a fool of yourself. So don't think that every journalist wants to write about your little dinky dinky story or your new product release. They probably don't want to. So you need to have a, a, a kind of a cliffhanger or something which attracts their attention. The third one is you have to focus and focus on the value. Provide the value and don't stop. Continuously go at it and it takes time. And the fourth one is building trust and relationship is key. So to build relationships, to build trust, take time and be consistent. And with public relations, you, you can do public relations or you can do press releases and then take advantage with your social media networks to reach more people. But you have to have uh, good content on your website such as or blogs, such as checklists, videos, uh, scorer of the month or goal of the month okay or our caterers were great and then you have a little video um, if you don't do that then there's nothing for people to find on your blog or on your social media destination and PR for me is sometimes like a flash in the pan you get a little bit of attention and then it sort of dies down and you have lost the contact with the people 
so this kind of stuff you have to make sure that you keep it uh, keep it going um, this actually brings me already to at the end of my of my uh, coffee break webinar number 19 uh, called why PR fails with social media marketing I hope you liked it and uh, I hope to see you again in two weeks time which is going to be the 26th of October on Tuesday 4 o'clock and I thank you very much for uh, having attended. Goodbye.